Hey, good morning. It's Steve down here at the Soggy Bottom Farm. I'm sifting some compost uh, for the garden beds this morning, and I thought I'd bring you along. And uh, we're going to make some improvements to this compost trommel. And uh, if you're in, uh, you intend to uh, make one of these yourself. Let me show you uh, what I'm doing and what this typical trommel right here results in its current state. And then uh, we'll check it out and uh, make some improvements and evaluate it. Let me get it going. This is my tailings bucket. It, uh, you know, you throw this in there first, it's worm food. But you see, chunks like this just roll right through it. If they could spend more time in that tumbler or get smashed up somehow, then, uh, sorry about the finger, then, uh, you know, you'd get more, uh, you want to get 100% of every shovel load. Now on the back end of this, this end, that's where I throw it in, this end, this is half inch, you know, wire screen. Then up here it's a quarter inch. You know, if your pile of compost is a little bit moist, what happens is it plugs up the screen and the fine part, the part you want. And then if we could keep that stuff in the quarter inch area longer, we could fill up the desired compost bucket first. This is the half inch uh, screen material. It has the consistency of most store bought uh, bags of compost, the size of it. The quarter inch section is over here. And this is... Uh, and you could really plant in this. It's really fine. This is what I'm after. So let's make some improvements. Uh, see if it benefits us. Hey, looks like I figured out why that tire went flat. Man, that treadmill just keeps on giving and giving and giving we'll use these screws to mount that chunk of tire inside that trommel all right well that thing ain't perfect but it's in there let's see what happens
definitely staying in this side a bit longer. Let me stop it. Dang it, I forgot to put my tailings bucket back in there. Anyways. He's clogging up pretty good here. Let's see if we can't figure out a way to keep this side of the screen a little cleaner than this. So we get more material out of this side. Man, this might be hard to believe for some people, but if you make your own compost, this right here is painful. That's a lot of effort right there. Dumped it right on the ground. Baby worms, 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 baby worms, 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 worms. I'm sorry, I'll never do that again. You gotta be careful when you're digging around in your piles of compost. Oh, I don't want him. Oh, shoot, he went down in that hole. I gotta get him out of there, he's in danger. Here. Let's get rid of him before he drops his tail. There you go, little buddy. You know, I do buy a few bags of uh, store bought compost every year, and this is my bag of choice for this year. Let me show you what's inside this bag. What you're going to find is stuff that looks like this. It's not bad. There's actually earthworms in it. And, uh, you know, if you like to water, this will be good stuff. It's not going to retain a lot of moisture. It's very unrefined. It doesn't even get your hands dirty when you play in it. You could wipe that off in a matter of an instant here. Not bad. This is what it's looking like if you compare it with what I made myself out of grass clippings. Nothing but grass clippings. You got this stuff drying out really, really fast. And you got this stuff through the half inch sifter. See, it retains moisture really good. Nothing but dried grass. And you know, it's, uh, it sticks to your hands. It's really decomposed. But that's not bad stuff if you want to buy some. Man, I apologize. I failed to mention it. But when I got done my first trailer load of compost, I had four of these finely sifted uh, barrels. These sweater boxes. Three from the half inch and three from the tailings. Hey, I'm back. Been sifting some more. I got rid of the first... Uh, I guess it was nine tubs, sifted some more, cleaned the old girl out, and let me show you the benefits of putting a simple little wall like that inside of your compost uh, tumbler. Well, trommel, not tumbler. I've been shoveling away for about 30 minutes here. I got one bucket of tailings. I got one bucket of sifted half inch mesh compost and then I got one two three buckets of finely sifted compost so if you ever decide to copy what other people have done on YouTube like me and make yourself a compost trommel for sifting put a wall in it if you separate it by two separate size screens like I did Man, it does a good job. If you're going to make a lot of compost and you want it to be sifted, you know, you got worm food over there. You got planting stuff over there. Then you got your buckets of YouTube compost here. 
you know, something you could take a picture of. All right, I'm Steve. Got to keep going here. A little bit more work to do. Hang in there. Show you what happens by the end of the day. Hey, on a bit of a side note. If you decide you're going to go raise garden beds, and you decide you want to plant some asparagus, grow it in some compost, every single year it goes down farther and farther and farther. So just keep that in mind, how deep your box is and what you plant in it. If I could do it over again, I'd have put gravel in the bottom of this box first. That way my asparagus wouldn't have to come through two feet of dirt to come out here and be eaten. Hang in there. But if you do, don't worry about it. Just bury them anyways. And don't, uh, don't put these tailings back in your compost pile. Put them in the box first. Well, I sifted all that compost and I got all these boxes filled. The wife's already planted a few cabbages over here. But anyways, I hope you guys had as productive a day as I have. Thanks for giving me somebody to talk to. I'll see you soon, I hope. I'm out.